let's see how we can now combine different operations, different calculations, and I call those operations recombinations, because as I said at the beginning, reducing is this process of recombining things. It's still abstract. Let me give you an example. And let's use the slices array we've been working on before. So we define this function longest, again, stored, which is the memory and current. And then we define it as a stored length greater than current length, return stored, instead return current. So this way we are returning the, the longest array. So let's see if it still works. So of course reduce longest and empty array because that's our uh, result. So we are getting the longest array. And now let's, let's say we want to find the shortest. So it will be almost exactly as the as the longest, so we are taking stored current and we are comparing. So if stored is longer than current, it means that we must return current and otherwise stored. So let's see if it works. So it's an empty array and we must, we have to re remove the initial value. So now it's five. And let's imagine we would like to get the longest and the shortest array, but to traverse the slices array just once. If we run reduce two times, it would mean that the slices array would be traversed two times as well. Is it possible to make it in one pass, in one run, in one traversal? Well, it is. We just need to slightly change the data structure. And in order to do that, we will create explicitly, we will, we will define explicitly the initial value, which will be an object that has two keys, shortest and longest. So to make this work, we need to define the smallest possible value for the longest and the longest possible value for the shortest. So in JavaScript, it's not possible to define unlimited array or unlimited um, data structures, which is possible in other programming languages. So we will define it as a null and we would need to do some checks in our reducer function. And why is that? Because if we define longest as the shortest possible array, everything that we are getting from our data from slices will be longer than that than empty array. So this way we will eventually find the longest array. And if shortest was the unlimited array, an array of unlimited size, every other array will be shorter, of course, because uh, an array which has a definite size is always shorter than an array that is unlimited. But we cannot define this in JavaScript, so we have to do some a trick, a hack, or a workaround to make this work. But this will become clear when we define our function, our reducer. So let's go ahead and define it. So this I will call it longest and shortest to explicitly state that this reducer, this function, finds at the same time the longest and the shortest array in one traversal. So as before, that's the same story here. This function, a reducer, always have two parameters, the memory, which is stored in our case, and the current value. And now we need to, I will write it in a more explicit way, how we can uh, define it. Let's pass it here, longest and shortest. We need to pass here the initial value we define. So now we know that at any given time, the stored will have this shape the shape of the initial value we provided. So it will be an object with the 
with two keys, shortest and longest. So now how we can find it. So it's pretty similar to what we did with the two separate functions. So first of all, we will be returning an object which will have shortest and longest. So let's start with longest because it's um, simpler. So we just will, we will take this body we had here and we will remove everything except this part and that's enough to make this work and the for, for the shortest let's copy this as well but we need to make some changes because shortest in the initial value for shortest is null because we were unable to define unlimited array an array of unlimited size we must check if this is null or not because otherwise we won't be able to use the length uh, property on null. This is this hack, this workaround. So let's call it um, current shortest. And this will be checking if stored shortest is null. So we can just check it this way. And if it's null, we will return the biggest possible value. So this is the from the object from the built-in number object max value. Otherwise, we will execute shortest length because this means that this is not null. This is some array, and we can get its length. So now here in the shortest, we can use the current shortest, and we can compare it with the current length. And if the current shortest is bigger, we will take current because it's smaller. Otherwise, we will take stored shortest. For the longest, we need to make the same adjustment because stored is an object. We need to access the longest um, part of this object here and the length. Current is always an array, so we can access length directly. And then, because we are assigning here, to the longest, if it's stored, we need to assign the longest part from this object that we are constructing as we go through this array. So this defines a one step. So we are doing we, we are going over each element and we are doing two operations at the same time, which is slightly just slightly more performant than going over um, than using two separate functions and going over this slices array two times. So now let's see if it works. So let's run it. Okay, I made a small mistake. So here in the current shortest, we need to invert the operations because if the shortest is defined, we can then access the length. And if it's not defined, if this value over here returns null, in that case, we need to provide the fault value, which is the biggest possible value. And let's see if it works. It works. So let me go ahead and change slightly um, the array. Let's run it again. And there you have it, it works. So it's, it's slightly more complicated, but I think this way you can see how we can use reduce and how we can combine um, different operations through one traversal, through one pass over the, the array. And it's, it, we are using an object which has, has fields for each uh, separate operation. So then it's, it depends on the case. In certain scenarios, it may be easier or it may be more readable to just divide it or to use two separate reduce operations with two separate reducers as we did at the beginning. In some other cases, it may be beneficial to combine it. And now with this example, which is kind of a little bit on the more difficult side, you can see how you can do that. That's all for today. See you next time.